Welcome, my name is Dobias Veninga and this time I have a video tutorial that can make your life a little bit easier as a networking administrator. What we're going to show you is how you can use Airwave to zero touch deploy in a controlled manner an Aruba OS switch. So what this means is that we can create templates and push different templates to the switch. Um, and I get back to the control part I mentioned because I think that's an important part uh, for a lot of organizations that makes sense and you can use this in every industry you want to because I think it makes your life easier and more efficient uh, as a network administrator. What we have running here is that we have a 3810 switch running here. I will show you that in a minute. We have a DHCP server because what will happen is that via DHCP we will push a certain option to the switch to automatically register the switch within Airwave and then be able to figuring out what the configuration is and push the configuration. So therefore we of course also have Airwave running um, and we have Wireshark to figure out uh, how, if the packets are being pushed and to do a little bit more analysis on the, uh, on the DHP packet. So let me start first, what are we going to push? So this is, uh, I'm using Open DHCP server if you're interested and we can have a look here. This is the range I'm using. So 172.16.050.255 and what I push is a certain uh, option 33. You can see the hex value here but above I, uh, I added it in text. You can see that I'm going to push switches that will be the group within Airwave. Top will be the folder in Airwave. Uh, the IP address is the Airwave IP address number and the HP is the shared uh, HP123 is the shared secret. So we will have a look at that later when this um, offer is being made and acknowledged by the switch what will happen in the configuration. You can see the DHP server is running here. Um, my, this is my Airwave server and in Airwave I have a group called switches that's already there. So what happens if you is this is the first switch that uh, and the group is not existing. So what will happen then is that it will recognize it will register itself and it will recognize that it belongs to that particular group based on the DHCP option. And if you then add it in Airwave, it will automatically create these groups. But I already have a group and that's for a reason, because I have templates visible, available in this group. And that's two templates. One is the provision 3810 and one is a provision 2920. For this tutorial, I'm going to use the 3810. So let's open that one up. And you can see that there is a name to it, that there is a device type to it. You can you can restrict the template for a certain firmware version. I didn't do that. I set it to no. But if you want to, you can also add the firmware version here and restrict this template to that particular version. Um, what I do is the question here is push complete configuration file and the device will be rebooted again after uh, after the config push. I only do that for factory defaults only. So the switch is also sending the state where it is in to Airwave. So based on that info, we can uh, we can particularly do this for, uh, for uh, certain config files. What I normally do is when I create the golden template, and this is my golden template, what I normally do is I build a uh, golden template on the switch, then I edit the switch manually and I will create another video how you can do that uh, to, to Airwave server and then I can, uh, from that device, I can fetch that configuration and the Airwave is making it so simple for you because it will make the template for you. Or and you can maybe even tweak or adjust it. But this is the template I'm going to push, a host name, and you can see the percentages here, that's the... Uh, variable we're going to fill in later. That's my controlled manner. Um, I'm going to put some SAP information, some VLAN information. You can see there is some untech command in there, there's some IP address, some AP include one. And you can see everything in green here is the variables I'm using inside my template. So this way you can easily figure out which variables I'm using. Uh, I didn't change the credentials uh, after AMP because I also do that in a control manner, so I do cancel. So what I will do now is let me go to home here, is I'm going to uh, start Wireshark here. So let me start a Wireshark capture, uh, continue without saving, and I only want to see boot P packets. So let me put a filter on there, and on the switch, I'm, I'm going to um, put the switch back to factory default. You do that with the Erase Startup Config command. So let's do that. Let's reboot it, and I'm on the console, so we can follow the reboot. 
after the reboot, I will connect as soon as possible to the console and I will uh, enable some debugging so that we can follow in depth what's going on and what packets are being received. So I think that would be good. So the switch is now going to reboot. That's why you see the DHCP server here that it can't find an interface because my port is not up. Uh, I'm unconnected to the same switch, but don't worry. Uh, we will be on time for that one. So let's give it a couple of, let's give it a minute until it's booting. And then uh, uh, when it's boot, I will try to connect as soon as possible to the, uh, to the console port. Okay, I'm connected to the console port. What I will do right now is I will immediately turn my debug destination to my session. I turn on debug ZTP and I turn on debug events. Then I can see, oh, sorry, uh, the event. Then I can see immediately what will happen. I will also make it a little bit longer. You can see my DHCP server here already provided an offer. Hey, you can see things are happening here. And um, so in the offer in the DHCP server, is uh, I, you can see that I uh, have the vendor specific information in there. That's what we looked, switches, the group, the top folder, the IP address and the shared secret. And that's also being acknowledged by my switch, as you can see here. So let's move away this window. What you can see here is that airwave details have been configured. You can see the IP address again, the group, the top and the uh, shared secret. You can also see that the registration started with Airwave uh, device flag. It is an HP, it is a switch. This is the firmware version, serial number, what uh, MAC address, and then the type. Uh, you can see it belongs to the group switches. Top, shared secret, status factory, that was important. Remember how we configured the, uh, uh, the, the template and switch registration successfully. So let's have a look what happened to our configuration. So we still have, let's say, almost like a factory default, but you can see that this command in here has been added, and that's what it received from the DHCP server. IP address group switches. So if everything is correct, and we do a refresh here, you can see that we have one new device. And that's our switch, provision switch, MAC address, IP address, uh, the, the folder and the group and the device state factory and the serial number. So important. So now I can add this and I'm going to add it as monitoring because I'm going to change it to manage later on. If the group and the folder were not existing right now and I do add, it will say here that it, it can create a new group and it does it automatically for you. But I'm going to add it to the group that we have in right now. So let me apply changes here. And let's go to the group. You can see switches. There is a device in there. At the moment, the configuration state is unknown. So what I will do, I will give it a couple of seconds until we get a change in the configuration stage that will probably be mismatched um, because then we can start to fill in all the parameters we want to give this switch because it needs to figure out now where it matches the switch to. So let's do a refresh. And you can see the status is now mismatched. So what we can do here is we hover over it and we can say manage and now you can see that there is a switch state is up configuration state uh, is mismatch uh, the group you can see the template is being used that's what we started this with it is on monitor mode and there is a whole bunch of values in here so what are we going to do is we're going to figure in I want the switch to be in manage mode because otherwise it doesn't uh, change my configuration I leave all of this. The only thing I'm going to change here is uh, within my template, I'm also adding a new username called ABCN admin. And I'm also having a certain password for that one. So in order to make sure Airwave can communicate with the device after the template is pushed, you need to change this configuration so that Airwave can keep on communicating. I want to change the host name of the device. So that's what I do here as I'm going to call it ABC and ZTP. Um, and what I want to do here is I'm going to change some untag ports because not every port will be in VLAN, uh, uh, VLAN uh, 1. 
and I'm going to do this up till 48. Uh, I don't want to have VLAN 1 as uh, DHCP VLAN. I want to give it a fixed IP address because I'm going to run it in production after this. Uh, and I also want to give it a certain net mask. That's good. Uh, I also, the, I will assign this to VLAN IP address of VLAN 10 that, I'm, that is added in by my template. With zero and I'm also do it in as you can see the AP include variable one is a bigger variable and what I do in here just to give you as an example that's also possible um, this will be the IP address and net masks being used in VLAN 20 so that we can push that also automatically with two variables so let's do a recap mismatch template being used we set it on managed make sure we have this user uh, reconfigured so that Airwave can communicate after we push the template. ABC and ZTP, that's good. Uh, we uh, change the untag ports because not everything will be in VLAN 1. We're going to have the fixed IP in VLAN 1. This is the IP address and net mask for VLAN 10 and this is, will be for VLAN 20. So let's save and apply. And we get an overview of what's going to change. You can see here, this is going to change. Apply changes now. And if we go to audit, we can exactly follow what will happen because this is the actual state and the desired state of the command. And let me, uh, you can see that the uh, airwave is logging in to the switch to make some changes there. And it will probably push by TFTP the whole config. And then what will happen is a reboot. Let's give it a couple of seconds. And there you can see TFTP transfer is completed and the switch is going into a reboot. Um, we can see here what's happened. Uh, there's a pretty good debug. Oh, sorry, I don't have a connection now. I'll we'll give it one second when my switch is back on. So the switch is in booting. It's now loading up with the new configuration we pushed. Let me try to see if we can already connect to the interface of the port of the console. There we go. Uh, and you can see that I immediately need to type in a username in order to log on. And if I do a show run, well, let me first set the term link a little bit longer. If I do a show run, you can see that we have a complete different configuration. Password manager is in there. Uh, the community names is VLAN1 with the right untag ports, with the right IP address. VLAN 10 is pushed with the right IP address. And uh, VLAN 20 also, and VLAN 30, we don't do anything. And this is still connecting to the switch, because then it doesn't see it as another device, but it updates the device that's in there. If I do here, uh, view download, you can exactly see what we did. It, it did what, what kind of commands have been executed. So it is very handy for debugging information. So, and we can see that the switch is back up. So if we move back to the switch, and you can see that the configuration state is now good. So if you move back to the device, it, the configuration state is good. Uh, it's a ABC networking, it's networking DVI, you can see the IP address, and we can also do show interface brief. Let's do a run, and you will, uh, it will now log in into the switch with SSH, uh, get this command, and we get the output. You can see, so if we didn't change that username um, in the template, fill it in, then the uh, airwave server was not able to communicate anymore. You will get an error, but it's running perfect. And we have a ready to roll operating environment without pushing. So advantages for your infrastructure will be, you constantly push the same template with a certain, uh, let's say, uh, certain special settings for every switch, but this will, either standardize your infrastructure from an edge perspective by pushing standardized configurations, but it also will make things much easier. And you can create different templates for different switches for different firmware versions. So you will be very flexible. So I hope you liked it. If you liked it or if you have any questions, please like the video or add questions or comments and we will get back to you 
as soon as possible. Thank you very much and hope to see you next time.